I would like you to meet him and her, or him and her, my 10 by 10 abacus. This is made out of PVC. Isn't that fun? It's made out of PVC and swim noodles. It's eight years old. Him and her is doing fine. OK, I'm sorry for turning my, this takes a second. OK, you know. All right, my name is Dirk Horton, and this is my 10 by 10 abacus. And I want to get right to it. That's a Japanese Chinese abacus. <laughs> Has nothing to do with that. So when you hear the word abacus, think of this. What we have here is swim noodles, numbers all over the place. And my job today is to have adults and children because, and, gran and grandparents understand how you can enhance early numeracy for these kids who struggle. And this is critical, okay? I, I have had 12 years of education and five decades of teaching at the advanced level. Came back home, thank you, Wenatchee. You gave me your kids. I'm talking about the ones we were just talking about. Who oh, did I hurt something? Did I hurt that? I felt, am I still coming through? Good, okay. What happened was they gave me their kids. My kids hate math. I need you to tutor. They had heard about me doing some work in physics and I taught at Wenatchee Valley College for a while and I said, but please. Ah. So, enhancing early numeracy using the 10 by 10 abacus and the power of 10. Pow. Now, boom, flashcards. Boom, speed tests. Boom, just incredible amounts of testing that doesn't feel good. Well, all of these, we have about 50% that suffer from premature, Mathicide syndrome. <laughs> and my job is to prevent that. And I hope today I can give you a couple of thoughts and that fits in with things that were talked about. Because we got to do this early. And you can do it. It doesn't require a doctorate in mathematics. It requires this one talk today and maybe a phone call, a free one, to me. All right, let's go. First of all, the power of 10. You know, we don't do for kids. We talk about this a little bit, and then we buzz on to flashcards. Whoops. Sorry. We buzz along to flashcards. I got to watch the, about this. OK. We buzz on to flashcards, and we don't focus really on what is the power of 10, our, whole, our fingers are the power of 10. That's what developed our number system. That's what our whole number system is based on. And you know what's interesting? If you go to a class early on, you might hear that once or twice. I want to tell you what. Whoops. <laughs> it should be the early on, and for kids who are suffering, it should be the major time. Let's spend it on 10. And you can see the person saying, wow. Okay. Now, what I'd like to do, do this right, yes, okay. Now, it's important to realize that this 10 by 10 abacus is designed, okay, is designed to highlight the power of 10. There's 10s all over the place, right? And notice what happens here. We know that the kids can see that there's 10 in each row. And by the way, it's real important for them to Try counting one of the rows first. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, it'll continue. But the important point is, when that young kid was counting, said one, threw one bead over. Said two, threw one bead over. Said three, threw one bead over. You know what that kid is really learning? 
what number comes after the other number. And people don't realize it. Teachers don't realize it. If you're just counting by 10 and you're moving one thing, what that's doing to that kid is teaching them about order. First place, second place, third place, fourth place. He's not teaching about what is that number, which is the most critical. OK, order's fine. But the most critical is, how do numbers, how do we get a rich experience numeracy? We get it by being able to see what numbers are. All right, ready? So what we have here is another way to, to do it. You say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thrilling. Because when the kid said what? Seven, what did he do? Or she moved seven beads. And by the way, that's kinesthetic. I moved seven beads, and I watched those seven beads come from here to here. You'd be amazed at how that gets in their heads. I know what seven is. Watch. All right. Now, a very important the next step, all right, is this perhaps is something that our teachers do understand really a lot, number bonds. But the problem is the kids don't have a way of visualizing it. What they do, they go immediately to numbers and they talk about it. No, we want them to see what makes 10. One and nine. Two and eight, three and seven, and I want to tell you what, that power of 10 is building because the entire math operations depend upon you feeling that 10, that idea of 10. So let's try some more. All right, now we teach them to name numbers, and that's good, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15, and so on. But what I teach my kids who are in shock about numbers, I don't teach those numbers. I know they'll learn them, but I teach numbers like, ready? I'm not going to say it, but see that? And then you say, 1105. Now, why is that important? Not to say 15. Later. Well, we can look at that thing and say, that's that. But what you did was, when you said 15, what did you do? It told you, if you say 110.5, it told you exactly how to make it. 110.5. If you did only realize that that is such a critical step for kids. The numbers, by the way, 15 don't make sense. I know that might be hard, but what comes first? Five, right? And then a 10. Well, that's five tens, but it's backwards. And it's a fault of our language. By the way, Mandarin doesn't do it that way. They do it this way. One ten. Whoops. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. Okay. Five ten one. I gotta watch that. All right. Now, five ten one. Five beads, right? You see, when the kids hear that, 5101, 5102, 5103, 5104, they're naming the numbers in such a way that they can visualize them. It's vital that we introduce this early. Next. <laughs> I'm actually going to do it right. All right. Now, let's start talking about what is so powerful about this, ladies and gentlemen. I'm getting excited. <laughs> OK. Why is this so powerful? We're going to take a look at 9 and 6. We've got 9 plus 6. Now, here's what the kids are taught when they're young. OK? They're taught to add by counting. How foolish. You don't know that that's, a, that's really dangerous. Now, we're, it's just it's OK for the beginning to play with that. But look what happens. Here's a kid goes, OK. In his head, he goes, nine. I got it, it's 15. Now, the interesting part about that, 
Didn't learn anything. Didn't understand it, but look, ladies and gentlemen, all you have to do is pay a little attention here. Watch. Can you see 15 right there? Huh? Can you see 15? Wait a minute. How many beads are here? Both of these rows. And you notice we, I'd have them draw a circle around them in their mind. That's 10. And by the way, they know this part. And then, what about this? Can they see that that's five? Oh, yes. 10 plus five. And by the way, because of the power of 10, it's really easy. Is it easy to do nine plus six or 10 plus five? In their heads, 10 plus five. Whew wins all the time. All right, so now we're going to also play something here called give and take. And this might surprise you, but if I move one beat over there and bring one back, we have the same number over there. And this is called give and take. And by the way, this is called grouping by fives. I've got to be careful. Grouping by fives, because there's, you got that? This is called grouping by tens. All right, I give this. And I do this. Guess what? Oh, no. That's also what? 15. Hey, wait a minute. The kids go, you mean there's more than one way? And I go, yeah. There's a lot more than that. And that's your job is to understand that it isn't a, this is the way you do it, flashcard speed test. No. It's you must have a feeling that. And you'd be amazed at how the confidence level goes up. Okay, you got six minutes left. <laughs> All right, I gotta go. I gotta go quickly. So I'm sorry about this. Subtraction is really important. And by the way, we dog gone. There it is. Subtraction is really important. Okay, and why is that? Well, subtraction. If you look at the algorithm that we have for subtraction, it'll drive kids crazy. They're not learning what that is. But look what you can do. For instance, let's do first to just take away. This is straightforward, right? 15, is that 15, right? I gotta do that. Thank you, I'm gonna get this right. And I can, what I can do there is take away seven. Now, how many ways can you do that? A lot of ways. <laughs> but one real kind of convenient way to do that is to say, I'm going to take away five and then two. Huh. I'm going to take away five and then two. And what do I have? Eight. Did you have to carry anything? Did you have to do this? No. You can see it. All right, next. By the way, we're going to do, let's do this again. We have what? I just want to make sure. I have 15. Is that 15? Yeah, this is hard up here seeing it. OK, now what happens then? What do you do? Well, you can do take away and adjust. And we want our kids to be adjusted. So what do we do is we do this. We take away 10, but I took away three too many. I was only supposed to take away seven. So you know what I have to do? Add these back. What's the answer? Eight. Again, is there more than one way? Oh, yes. And the third way is not something that's taught very well. And this is actually, being an advanced math guy, this is one of the most critical. Oh, dear. OK. <laughs> and that is, we start with seven, and we ask, OK, how far is we start with? Seven, how, low, how far is it to 15? Huh. What we do this is three and five. We've changed it to an addition problem. And that is one of the most powerful things you can do for the youngest kids, is to have them understand that subtraction is looking at the difference of numbers. OK, let's hurry up. Change to addition. All right, one more. OK, this one may have to do with fast. And this is important. This tells you about their multiplication tables. And I have to finish this in one, uh, three minutes and eight seconds. Oh, I have plenty of time. Okay, good. 
Are you ready? Now, the kids know their tens by this time. They love it. 10, 20, 30. And you know what they also tell me? I don't have to tell them. Mr. Horton, is it true that when you multiply a number by 10, all you do is add a zero? Wow. How did you learn? How did you know that? I saw it. OK, next. Once you get the tens, how about we learn our nines? Oh, let's go to the flashcards. No. Watch this. One times nine is 10 minus one. Huh? Two times nine is 20 minus two. That's 18, in case you didn't know that. Three times nine is what? 30 minus three. 27. Guess what? You know what we do in schools? We try to teach their flashcards, but they also use the smallest numbers. You don't take advantage of the power of 10 and 5. You'd be amazed at how much confidence that will build in seeing that. For instance, OK, you saw this. Now, there's another one, and that is 11. Are you ready? It's 11. Now, you have to imagine one over here. Right over here. That's, huh. One times 11 is 10 plus 1. That's 11. Two times 11 is 20 plus 2. Three times 11, guess what? They're learning that fun thing that they learned when it was really easy. Because you notice there's two, ima there's two imaginary beads here. And then three, it's 33, 44. 40. They will actually learn that pattern. By the way, we're programmed, genetically programmed to learn patterns. Why the, are we teaching them to memorize? That's crazy. All right, finally. Yeah, OK. What, you can see up here, OK, you do your 1 times 5s. So you got that. Let's do this. 1 times 6 is 5 plus 1. 2 times 6 is 10 plus 2. Da -da 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 -da. By the way, if you do fours, one times four is five minus one. Two times four is five what? What do I do here? This is, yeah. Oh, look at that. Ten minus two, that's eight. Do you see that you actually see that happening? And the kids benefit. All right. I want you to know that I have 10 seconds, and I would like Freya, come on up. We want to show what's going to happen here. I'm, I'm going to be over this um, by about five minutes or something. No, not five minutes, five seconds. All right, now what I do with my kids, because, by the way, the kids teach me, taught me how to do this. The greatest gift I can receive is to have someone learn from me. So they got it. That, that was really incredible. But what happened is we need to bond. So when I see my kids, do we do that? No. <laughs> High five is gone. All right? What do we do? Put your hands up. We go, High pie. Go ahead. High pie. You ought to practice that. Pi is a big number. It's forever. So if you ever high pie somebody, you better really understand that what you are, are you're committed to forever. And thank you very much.